Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you three easy ways to measure features when you're painting a portrait. Okay, with one-to-one -one measuring, you're just simply using your photo reference, which has been sized to the exact same size as the face you plan to be painting. So we can see that the head of our painting is pretty much the same size as the head of the photo reference. This makes measuring so quick and so easy. So you can print out your reference image or you could have this reference image pulled up on your computer monitor and you can use the proportion tool and you can see how things line up the same. It just makes measuring quick and easy and I feel like it trains the eye to really understand what it's seeing because you're not making things smaller than the reference or larger than the reference. You are measuring things to be exactly the same, one-to-one -one measuring. So you can work your way through the features and just really understand how things are lining up quickly and simply. So there's some examples of one-to-one -one measuring. I recommend using a proportion tool with your one-to-one -one measuring because I feel like it's just going to make it that much more exact. It's a little more difficult to use a paintbrush or a pencil and you know start trying to use your finger and the end of the paintbrush or the pencil to align things properly. You can do it but it's just more exact and you can really see things, how they're lining up with the use of a proportion tool. So I gotta ask you, have you ever had your work critiqued? It is the one thing that has helped me improve my painting the most. So I wanted to remind you guys that I do offer critiques. You can see the single critiques and I have packages of critiques. You just go to sjcportraitcourse.com. I'll leave that in the link below and you can check it out. So critiques are a huge way to improve your skills. If you don't get them from me, get them from another professional artist that you trust. That brings us to the comparative measuring. What you can do with comparative measuring is you can pick a feature. So I'm gonna choose the right eye, and I'm gonna use the right eye to determine how far across the face that we're gonna go. I'm going to make a measurement of that eye. Fill that with a color. Angle this a little bit so we can make sure we have the measurement correct. So what we can do is we can take this distance from the inner corner of the right eye to the outer corner of the right eye and we can move another piece of the measurement. So now what we're looking at is we have two eye widths across the face so far. So this shows us two eye widths across. So let's go ahead and do a third eye width across. What this shows us is from the outer corner of the right eye, we have one, two, almost a half width across till we get to the left edge of her face. So let's do that same kind of measurement on our underpainting. This will be a great way for us to check and see that everything is lining up the same. I'm going to create a box that is the width of the right eye, just like we did on the photo reference. Give it a little rotation. Let's move that up over the eye so we can make sure it is measuring the width of the right eye. And that looks pretty good. So what we wanna do, grab another one. So we have the second eye width, line that up, let them touch. So that's lining up pretty good. So our second eye width lined up just past our pupil on the left, and that's looking just about like what we have over here. So let's continue and put in the third eye. And I stopped the edge of her face on the left here at just about the halfway mark of that third eye width, which is making sense looking at the reference, it's just about the same thing that we see there. That's a great way to use a feature in the face for comparative measuring. So we see one eye, 
two eye, three eyes across. But we can also take that same eye measurement and do something like this. We can rotate it, bring it over, and let's see. If we use this as the little corner of the eyebrow right here, then we can walk down the face using the width of the eye as a measurement to tell us if our nose has gone down the length of the face correctly. We're gonna do the same thing on our eye measurement here. So I've turned the right eye vertically and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to bring it over and line it up with the eyebrow. Another one just below that. And this way I can see that the length of her nose comes down to about right here, and the length of this nose comes down to about right there as well. So when you have the vertical eye lined up, two eyes down, we can see that the nose ends pretty much the same place in the photo reference as it does in the underpainting. We can even take this same eye width, bring it down, and measure the width of the mouth comparatively. We can see that the mouth is one. So that's how two eye widths compare to the mouth. So let's take our photo reference, do the same thing, and take a second eye to the mouth. See how they line up. They are pretty close to the same. So we can see two eye widths comes to about uh, the middle of that second eye. Two eye widths comes to about the middle of the second eye in the photo as well. All right, let's use another feature in the face. How about we take a look at the length of the head using the length of the forehead to figure out if we have the face long enough. We're going to the top of the eyebrows from about the hairline. So I think that looks good. Now let's see how many of these we need to have to match up the length of the face. So there's two, there's three, and there's four. So these are forehead lengths. So the face is one, two, three, and a quarter forehead lengths down. So let's now take a look at the underpainting doing the same thing. Let's make our little measuring rectangle. We're going to use the top of the eyebrow to about the hairline. We have the one forehead length, number two, number three, and number four. And this is showing us that our face is not quite as long as what is happening in our reference. Makes me think that perhaps the forehead is not the correct length. So let's do this. Let's take a look with the eye measurement. So let's see. So it is just about, not quite, two eye widths high. So let's take a look on our photo reference and compare the eye measurement there as well and put a second eye on top of that first eye and I can now see that is where things went a little awry in the underpainting. It looks like we needed to bring the hairline down a little bit closer towards the eyes and I think that would have solved some of the problems on the top part of the head. So if you don't have Photoshop and you wanna use comparative measuring, no problem. You can use a proportion tool, a simple paintbrush, a pencil, whatever you have handy. So if you're using your paintbrush, just take the end of that and we can do the same thing. We can go with the right eye width and we can say that's two eyes across. Line that up, three eyes across. That's about two and a half eyes across to get to the edge of the left side of the face. So if we do the same thing on our underpainting, it's about one eye, two eyes, three eyes. And again, two and a half, whoops, two and a half eyes across gets us to the left edge of the face. So we saw that by just walking across each of the three eyes. 
So with the proportion tool, it's the same thing. Find the width of the eye you're using. There's the second, and there's the third. So it's about two and a half eyes across to get to the left side of the face. So then we find the width of the eye in our painting and walk across. And again, it's about the same thing, two and a half eyes to get to this left edge. So the proportion tool works and the paintbrush works. You can use any feature. You could use the length of the forehead to determine so we see it lining up at the bottom of the nose and that's the chin. So we have three foreheads down. One, two, three. So I'm using the top part of the paintbrush and my fingers marking the bottom part of that measurement space. Two and three. Same thing over here. We can measure the forehead. We have one, two, three forehead it's down and it gives us the length line of the face. So these are pretty much matching up as far as that goes. And I can show you that with the proportion tool. Looks like this. So we have the width of the forehead comes down. Here's the second width of the forehead or length rather. And the third length of the forehead shows us the length of our face. With the proportion tool, same thing. You just walk yourself down and there you have it. So it's three forehead lengths down to get to the whole length of the face. So you can use widths and lengths of different features and different areas in the face to measure off one another. I recommend that you don't use just one feature. You wanna check it in a couple different ways to see if things are lining up. So this brings us to overlay measuring. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to drag the photograph that we're working from and put it on top of my underpainting. And I'm going to make the opacity low enough so that I can see the painting through the reference image. This is a really solid way to get a really good understanding of how close you've come to matching up the features in your painting. You can do this with the underpainting, you can do this with the drawing, you can do it even with a full color painting. And you just want to line everything. So I'm looking at this uh, left eye as one of the features that I'm going to really solidly line up with and just the whole left side of the face seems to be lining up perfectly and as we learned earlier it looked like we didn't bring our hairline down far enough and this is showing that to be the case as well it looks like the other features are off only a little bit that right eye i see a little bit of difference i see a little bit of difference in the nose looks like we brought our nose down a little bit further Actually, I'm sorry, we didn't bring our nose down far enough. The photograph nose is down. Let's see. I can remove it. Yeah. So my nose is sitting a little bit high. This nostril should have come down to around right here. And the mouth looks lined up pretty good. The face length, the neck, everything else is good. But I could have made a little adjustment in the nose and a little adjustment in the right eye and with the forehead. <laughs> hairline. But other than that, it came out pretty close. But you can now see how overlays work so well to help you understand how you're doing with your measuring.